Hey everyone and welcome back to epistemology and we are looking at theories of perception at the moment and we are right in the middle of looking at direct realism and the problems with this theory of perception. Just to recap again then that epistemology we've looked at what is knowledge, we've explored reason as a source of knowledge so just through thinking the idea that we can come to new knowledge and we're involved in theories of perception at the moment because we're looking at perception or using our senses as a source of knowledge and the limitations of that. So remember we're using these sheets to fill out the ideas of the theories outlining very carefully the arguments against direct realism at the moment and then possible responses at the bottom so that we can add to our 25 markers. So last time we looked at direct realism and we described it as a theory that identifies objects in the world as mind independent things. So apples exist out there and apples have their own properties. They have properties of colour, shape, size, density. And then we looked at the issues of perceptual variation with that and looking at people like Bertrand Russell, who described that we see a table in so many different lights and in different as a different shape depending on where we stand. And that led us to consider that what we do perceive directly is not necessarily the object. Now today we're carrying on with that kind of line of thinking and we're going to move on to the issue of illusion or the argument of illusion. Okay so I'm going to show you a few things that I want you to consider. So what are you perceiving here? Are you perceiving straight lines? Are they horizontal? Are they parallel? Or is there a slopingness to these lines? Okay, I'm not sure whether this is going to work on a PowerPoint. Shake your head. Can you see anything? What you should be able to see is some kind of Pokemon. Okay, have a good look at this one. Does it appear, do there appear to be little white circles in between the squares? And the more that you look at the white circles, they turn black, then white, then black, then white. But there are no circles there at all. So illusion is a problem for the direct realist. The direct realist tells us that what we see is what is out there. But sometimes we assign or give properties to objects that they just don't have. Take this stick in water or straw in water. We assign the property of bentness to the stick as this is what we perceive. And as Descartes said, a square tower in the distance might look round. So how can our perception be direct if we make such errors with it? So the argument from illusion goes like this. Sometimes I assign a property to an object that it does not possess. For example, a stick in water appears bent when in reality it's not. I'm assigning movement to this spiral on the right when in reality there is no movement. Therefore, what we immediately perceive is not what is in the world. Therefore, direct realism and its claims are wrong, is incorrect. What could a direct realist say in response to this? Well, they could say that we don't perceive a bent stick. We directly perceive a stick that's half submerged in water and it appears to be bent. It's not a bent stick, it appears to be bent. And they would explain that the optic properties of water 
are very different to the optic properties of air. Now remember, we're thinking of these properties being out there, mind independent. So direct realists conclude that they can still perceive objects by taking into account the relational properties involved in their perception. Again, we're maintaining that there are objects out there, they exist mind independently, and they possess both intrinsic and relational properties. Let's move on to the problem of hallucination. Now, hallucinations tend to be the results of, of drugs or of illness. Why is hallucination a problem for the direct realist? Well, let's think about it. The direct realist tells us that what we see is what there is. And we know that hallucinations are things that we think we see, but there is no external mind independent object to which that thing relates. So the problem from hallucination runs as follows. In a hallucination, we perceive something such as an image or a sound. So when I was younger, I had a fever and I imagined, but I, I thought I perceived sort of golden honey coming in through the crack of a door and pouring down the side of the door. So in that hallucination, I perceived something like honey pouring down the door. So I perceived this thing as if it was an object in the world. However, there was no honey pouring down the, the, the door. There was no object to which this image or smell or sound related. Therefore, what we perceive must be mind dependent. So something that's going on internally in me, sense data. So hallucinations can be subjectively indistinguishable from veridical perceptions. Now that just means that hallucinations can be identical to veridical or just real life experiences. It means we can't tell the difference sometimes between a real perception and a hallucination. So going to the conclusion then, Mind-dependent hallucinations are identical to veridical or true perceptions. So they must also be mind-dependent because there's nothing between them. There's no difference. Therefore, direct realism is false in its claim that there are mind-independent objects. How can the direct realist respond to the problem of hallucination? Well, they can say quite clearly that there must be a difference between a hallucination and a veridical perception. Now, remember, a veridical perception is a real everyday perception of something, a real object that's out there. Because there must be a difference between a hallucination and a veridical perception, because it how could we ever say, oh, I hallucinated, if actually there is no difference between them? We'd never be able to tell that we'd had a hallucination. Another issue, another piece of evidence that the direct realist could throw back to this um, objection is that hallucinations seem to be differentiated by another sense. So we might think we see something, but then when we go to touch it, that thing isn't there. So hallucinations don't marry up with our sense perception because it tends to be with our sense perception, we see something and we touch something and those experiences come together and they make sense. I don't know whether you know the example of Macbeth, who thinks that he sees a dagger before him. So he has the vision, the hallucination of the dagger. But when he goes to touch it, he can't. 
And that seems to differentiate a hallucination with a veridical experience. And finally, and quite brief objection now, is the time lag argument against direct realism. So what we see is often not what is the case. For example, as Russell illustrates, the sun takes eight minutes to travel to us. When we perceive the sun, we're perceiving the sun eight minutes ago. So if the sun ceased to exist five minutes ago, we would not know that because we would still see the sun. So what we see is not what is the case. So the time lag argument is really quite simple. It runs as follows. Our experience of time is such that what we perceive now might not correspond with how the world is now. Therefore, our perception of the world cannot be immediate and direct as the direct realists insist it is. Let's have a look at how a direct realist might respond to the time lag argument. I don't think they're going to find the objection, the time lag objection, too damaging because they can still retain a lot of what they're claiming about perception and direct perception of objects in the world. So direct realists would accept that there is a time lag in perception, but this doesn't mean that we do not directly perceive objects as they were. OK, it might be that they cannot always perceive objects as they are immediately, but they can perceive objects directly as they were. But there's certainly no need for the direct realist to start to think that everything is suddenly mind dependent and to invoke sense data. So they would conclude that time lag means that our direct perception cannot be instantaneous all of the time, but there are objects that do exist mind independently and those objects have properties. The only thing that they perhaps have to give up on is that all our perceptions are immediate. 